Welcome to our CSS crash course. Today we'll be going over the fundamentals of CSS so that you can start creating stunning websites from scratch. Think of CSS as the magic that turns your website from something of a skeleton like this to a compact, nicely laid out site like this. I hope you're excited. Let's get started. So before we have to do some preparations, first of all, I'd like to state that there will be no flexbox or animations covered in the CSS crash course because to cover those they would take up quite some time and they are a bit advanced for beginners and I'd also like to say that you have to get a text editor to continue on with me if you are here from the HTML crash course then you probably have one and you also have to choose a web browser I do recommend Visual Studio Code and Google Chrome because those two are the industry standards. So let's quickly go over what CSS actually is and what it stands for. CSS stands, stands for Cascading Style Sheets. It defines the look and the design of the web page. You can also change the layout of the elements. And I'd also like to state that this is not a programming language, it's a styling language just like HTML is a markup language. JavaScript will be a programming language, this one is not yet. So to conclude, we'll be using CSS to bring some magic to our site and make it look pretty. That's all. To get started, first let's create a separate folder for, our, for this video, for our crash course. I call this CSS crash. Open it up and inside here we are going to create an index.html first of all. And then let's open the studio code. So you simply come here, file and open folder and then choose your folder from the desktop or from, from wherever you put it. Here on the top left corner, choose the explorer. And then we are going to have a look at our index.html. And remember, we first have to get our HTML layout, which can either be done with an exclamation mark or with HTML5. I change the title real quick. I've opened up our file. And before we get to styling anything, let's talk about what type of stylings do we have and what should we use. So there are overall three different styling ways you can use your CSS skills. The first one is inline. Now inline styling is unprofessional. I'll show each of these an example. Inline styling basically means that you select the element inside your HTML and in the same line where your HTML is, you style it. Please don't do that. It's really unprofessional, unscalable and not reusable. There is internal styling when you put a style tag in your head, in your head tag. And while this is a little bit better than inline styling, I still wouldn't recommend it because it's still not reusable and you can only use it in the HTML file that you're working with. And external styling is when you have a separate CSS file. This is what you see most often, in fact, almost every time. And this is what I do recommend. So let's have a look at these in practice. I'll show you an example of inline styling first. Let's create an H1 element. So inline styling is unrelevant and unscalable. And how you're going to go on with styling this is you say style and inside the double quotation marks you can choose your css property why go simple with this so the color property will set the text color of whatever is inside the h1 tag this time let's go with this aquamarine if i save now and refresh you can see there is our text and this is how it changed its color now let's take an example on how internal styling is done. So style, this is the style tag in your head after the title, for example. Now we are going to talk about CSS selectors. So CSS selectors are styling blocks. They are the building blocks of CSS. And here I brought you an example and the basic syntax of a CSS selector. First of all, you select what element you'd like to style. This can be an H1 element, for example, and then all H1 elements will have the styling applied here. You give it a CSS attribute, which I've already shown you an example, for example, color, 
and then you give it a value. Keep in mind, you have to get the brackets, the semicolons all right, otherwise it will complain and throw errors and not compile. And here is an actual example. So we select the H1 tag and every H1 tag inside our HTML that we apply the styling to, we have the color red. So now that that's clear, we'll do the same as before. So an age one tag. And then inside the age one, we'll say color. And let's say this brown, for example. So you can choose as for colors. A lot of options are given to you by the editor and by CSS. I make a new age one element. Save and then refresh. And you can see that is our brown color on our age one. But you might be thinking that, wait a minute, before I just said that this age one applies to every CS, every age one in our styling. Well, that's not quite true because inline styling will override whatever CSS you have before. Because as the compiler comes, is that it says, oh, age one color brown. Great. But then it comes to the body. It reaches the first age one element and the styling gets overwritten by this aquamarine color. And now I leave this styling here and we are going to have a look at the external styling type. So come here to the explorer tab on the top left corner. Right click and create a new file. And we are going to call this styles.css. The styles.css is going to be completely empty. And we are going to do the same works the same here as well, so an age one. And then let's set a different color for it. For example, blue. And then refresh. Well, nothing happened. And that's because you have to link your CSS. And keep in mind that the order here matters. We've written an inline styling. And if I link my CSS here by saying link, and there comes CSS, it will drop you this. The rel attribute will tell that this is a style sheet and the age ref, I delete this, press control plus space in Visual Studio code and it will suggest our file there, styles.css. And if I save now, keep in mind that this, the linking will override the age one that has the color brown. I save and refresh and now it's blue. Great. Now while we're at colors, I like to go back from now on, we'll be working in our styles.css. And there are three ways to give colors in CSS. The first one, we've pretty much overused it, is when you choose of the suggested colors. Then, you can also say color and give a hexadecimal value, which starts with a hashtag and then some numbers. For example, like this. And then you save, come in a third way, which we'll be saying RGB, red, green, blue. And you put in some values here. And it will again override our current color setting. I refresh and the color changed. And you can actually do this if you hover over this little rectangle here that's giving the color. You bring here your mouse. And then you can change the color. And when you change it, you can change what type of color you want here. And this is the transparency. So if I drag down the transparency, it will it won't be visible because it will be completely transparent. And here it will be completely visible. That's how you can play around with it. And this will give you an RGB value. But I'll revert this so that you can see all three examples. Now above the age one, the order it does not matter because we are selecting a different element but i it's good practice to always style the body there you can actually style the body by coming here and saying for example background color and i use the rgb values this time and simply give it a color then you refresh and when you style the body it will change the whole background the whole document background now i'd like to come here and put some more elements in for example inside the p tag i say lorem and then it's overflowing, but it will give me some dummy text. 
and I'd also like a wrapper here and this wrapper is going to be a div I'm going to wrap it inside this and we are going to start talking about classes and IDs so classes and IDs what are those? a class is a group a class that will apply as a tag to one of your HTML tags and it will mark them and you can later go and style your classes the syntax is basically class equals quotation marks or double quotation marks and then the value the name of the class that you want to give classes are given to groups similar elements for example that you want to have similar stylings on on the contrary ids are usually given to only one element so they are unique and that's how you should use them despite the fact that you can give the same id to all elements so the syntax is the same except that you give an id there and here are the selectors that you can style in css so when you're coming with classes keep in mind that there is a dot there then the class name and the basic styling the css attribute and the value so there's a dot keep attention to that and then there is a hashtag whenever you're styling an id but if it's not making sense we'll have a look at it in a minute so if I come back here now, and the div is going to have a class container. And we are also going to give a span here. A span element, remember it's an inline element, so it won't take up a new line. Span, and they will have an ID highlighted. That's all we are going to do in our HTML. Let's jump to our CSS and we'll start styling the container. So as I showed you before, dot container. And then there are different type of settings we can set. Since the container wraps everything inside it, we can set, for example, a font family. The font family will set a different type of font. You can see there are some presets here, but I'd like to go with Helvetica. And then comma. And after this, the basic font. Then we can say load sans serif font as a backup. So if I refresh now, our P elements will also appear. The styling changed. You can see it clearly. And we can also set, for example, a text align. We can align to the end, which is the right, the center to justify. To left and all that I say center here you can play around with the values or find whatever you prefer for this crash course we'll be using center and you can see how the container which I applied it to if I remove it the classes the stylings won't be applied if I refresh it comes back to normal but if I apply the class right back there sorry not dot simply container then it will apply the styling now let's get to the id which is highlighted i'll copy this here and as i said we do it with a hashtag highlighted and then the basic css syntax and we'll change the color to for example padded blue and a text decoration will also be given which will be underline for example as you saw during the text decoration there is dash dotted double all of these affect the text but we'll go with the underline this time and there you can see if i zoom in a little more there is our basic span that we've put with our id now i'd like to show you something more in the browser because this time we are going to tap into the developer tools so if you press f12 something like this is what you should be seeing then you can come here and select the elements tab you can see what your html is so you can actually change your html here for example like this but i'll just refresh so you can see the elements and if you hover over one of the elements you can see its styling remember the age ones that we've written there 
see how they are overwritten by the aquamarine color i can disable this color or disable those you can see the basic stylings that an h1 element has and there you can see the margin border and padding which we will be talking about later but the developer tools are really important because otherwise you would to test something you would always have to refresh but here you can do it in real time so if i start changing around the colors you can see how it changes real time and you can then come here copy the value and then paste it into your css and you won't be having to worry about it later you won't be having to always refresh another thing that i want to show you is that you can actually select the elements by coming here this is on the top left of the developer tools if you come here then you can hover over the elements and select them this is the our html tag and if i come in closer this is the p tag that we're hovering over then the h1 tag you select it and then the styling will pop up right here and the last thing that you will use when you're developing in the developer tools with this amount of knowledge is the Div toggle device toolbar next to the arrow the select arrow you toggle this i zoom out a little and then you can set mobiles so for example this is a preset for a 320 pixel mobile i mean in width this is a bigger mobile then this is a large mobile that you can have a preset for tablet or a laptop or even greater and you can push this and drag this so you can check the responsivity and how your website will look on other devices if you come here to the dimensions responsive you can also set for example an iphone 12 pro how would it look on an iphone 12 pro how would it look on an ipad pro how would it look on a samsung galaxy s8 plus but i prefer to use the responsive view because then i can play around with it personally so these are very important go and explore the developer tools we will have a look at a bunch more styling and then you can play around with a bunch more styling in the developer tools as well all right so let's talk about some other typography attributes because so far we've only worked with colors and i don't want you to think that css is only about colors so for example let's select the p tag and then you can set a font size how big it should be for example 15 pixels I'll drag this to the side. If I refresh, the styling changed. But you could also set 10 pixels, for example. Then it's smaller. You can set the letter spacing, for example, to 1 pixel. If I refresh, there you can see the letter spacing changed. 3 pixels. Again, it changed, but I'll leave it at 1. You can also set a line height. And the line height is usually given in EM units, so 1.8 EM. And now EM is a more responsive value. You have a different you have different type of values in CSS for more responsiveness. There you can see how it changed. So for example, we have the percent. You can set a percentage. You could also set RAM units, the EM units, and the pixels. When you are working with a responsive styling you are most likely going to use persons so that whenever you squeeze the page together the person will always remain the same and what i wanted to show you is that actually you can select tags inside tags so for example i want to select only the p tag inside the container and if i refresh now and um, actually i copy this but it will be outside of the container I refresh then you can see it's not styled and that's because side and then space and then you put whatever you want to style inside it we could also do the same you can select the same tag multiple in multiple occasions in CSS it will get overridden if it finds the same CSS attribute in it but I not only want to style for example the p element inside the container but what if I also want to style the h1 element inside the container then 
if you put a comma between them, you can list the elements that you want to style, and inside them, you can say what type of styling you'd like. So, for example, text align left or text transform uppercase or lowercase or capitalize but let's say uppercase for now and i refresh you can see how everything inside the container got uppercase and the p elements as well as the h1 elements and i didn't select them separately i just put a comma between them but i'll actually comment this out you can dynamically comment in css by pressing Ctrl K and C in Visual Studio Code, and you can uncomment it by pressing Ctrl K and U. I refresh, we're back to normal, except that the text align left is applied. And now I'd like to talk about margins, width, and height, padding, and borders. So, when it comes to margin and padding, there is something called the CSS box model that we'll be using to represent how padding and margin works. This is it. So you can see inside, this can be your P element, for example, or your container as the div that we are going to be working with, the content. It will have a separate width and a separate height. Then, the padding is the first that's going to give some spacing. It will give spacing from the inside. Because if the border is zero, or the neutral area, then it will come the padding to the inside and the margin is same as the padding it gives spacing except that it will give padding towards the outside so this is the scheme that you're going to be looking at most of the time and you can see there is the top right bottom and left and this will be important because when giving out margin there are actually shorthand syntaxes which will use the top right bottom and left in this order clockwise so let's have a look at an example of just that. For example, I select the container again and I can say margin top 20 pixels. I save, refresh, and watch the top of the page. Actually, for some reason, it did nothing. Is it applied? Yes, it is. Then maybe it was already applied in the 20 pixel margin. So let's give some margin from the bottom as well 20 pixels. And you can select the left as well, 20 pixels, and the right as well. So you can come and write this separately. This is one way of doing it. If I refresh now, you see how it gets inlined. So it gets pushed inside. And there are actually shorthand syntaxes to this. For example, simply saying margin. And then, as I said before, you go clockwise. So the top first, 20 pixels on the top. 20 pixels on the right, 20 pixels on the bottom, and 20 pixels on the left. It's the same as saying this, but it's much shorter. If I refresh, nothing will change. Now, uh, there, are, there is an even shorter syntax to this. So margin, 20 pixels on the top and the bottom, if you don't give all four values, and 20 pixels on the sides. This, this is the same saying this if i refresh nothing will happen and that is the shortest syntax if you don't want to specify on which side how much it should be you simply say 20 pixels and it will give you all, all size the equal amount of padding or sorry the margin that you've given if i say padding it's going to work the same so i could write the same with padding but this time i just want 20 pixels towards the inside as well because it goes to the inside if i save now and refresh you can see how it gets pushed even further and i'd like to set some border because we all do so are the word borders so a border whenever you're working with a border you have to choose a color for it i'll choose a hexadecimal hexadecimal value for this one this black will do i can choose what type of border should it be? It can be solid, for example, and we'll go over these values. And then the width of, for example, 5 pixel wide solid border. If I save and refresh, you can see that there is the border. I'll override this with a new line. We use the same color, but this time it will be dashed. 
and it will be three pixels wide only. If I refresh, you can see how dashed it is. You can also set dotted, for example, and then it will be dots instead of dashed. But I like to go with dashed this time. So there are these three values, solid, dotted, and dashed. And you can see now how it's built up. There is 20 pixels on the inside, that's the padding. There is the border, and then there is the margin. And if I come up to full view, press F12, I come to the laptop view, for example, or I can just simply, or I can simply just toggle off this whole device view. I click the select element, and this is the body. This is not what I want to select. This is the container. Do you see how there is a green space for the padding? If I click it now, come down here, you can see the box model right here. If I select the content, it highlights the content, then the padding, then the border gets highlighted, and then the margin gets highlighted. I just not visible because of the background color that I've chosen. You can actually change the values here, so it will be in pixels, but for example, 50, I want 50 padding from the right side. And you can see how it changed. I want a thicker border on the bottom, for example, like 6 pixels. It's much thicker now. And you could also go with 4000 margin. It will push our page completely off to the side. And you can see how this also goes in in live so i don't have to refresh to see the changes but if i refresh now it will all get lost but you can keep playing around with it and then after you're happy with the settings you can take a screenshot or copy those values and then bring it back to css actually you can copy those because if i change them you can see the margin settings will would change right here also those that got overwritten and i can actually put a new color here like you can see how it changes i can also put new selectors here like this just keep attention to which element you're currently selected now that we're done with this i'd like to show you some more settings so we'll go with the div we'll create a simple empty div here give it the id gradient and we'll create another div and let's give it the plus image these won't be visible if i refresh but we'll go and style them nicely so i start with the gradient styling remember this is an id so you put a hashtag there and you can actually well, let's say i want the width of it to be 90 percent it still won't get be visible because it, we didn't give it a color the height will be 300 pixels and then i'd like to have it uh background color white white if i refresh you can see a rectangle appears right there and i actually wanted to put this inside the container like that it's always 90 percent but you can see it's not in the middle yet so if i say margin and auto it will set the margin automatically and it will push it to the middle to the center because it will set it an equal amount of margin from each side if i refresh it pushes it to the middle then let's also do actually there is a site if you search for gradient gener generator you come to the site i like to use it whenever i'm working with gradients you can choose how your gradient should look like for example like this and the attributes that you need so you don't have to reinvent the wheel you can easily play around with this and how the linear gradient works is that there's a gradient you give it a degree right here let me zoom in there is the degree and then you give it the values and how much of space should it take up of the whole coloring in persons you could also choose radial and then you wouldn't have to give a CS degree attribute. You would just have to say circle. But I'd like to go with linear this time and just paste whatever we had in like this. 
I exit the site now, refresh, and since the background changed, first of all it changed to red, you can even omit this line because you don't need it, it's just a safety measure, we can also omit the background color, if I refresh, and like this, it will change the same, so you need a background, and this is just something that I wanted to show you because I found it interesting, you can set linear gradients right there. Now we'll style the image, we'll give it the same width, so 90% width, we'll give it the same height, actually I copy over these values, because I want it to be a rectangle like this, but instead, what you can do, and you can also do it on the body, you can set a background image, the background image you can set to URL, and you can either with control plus space if you have an image downloaded you can select your image or we'll go and look for background images and i'd like to select this one i copy the image address this time i don't want to save the image i just paste it in here it will overflow then i refresh and that is our image if i come and want to put some spacing between these, <coughs> then I can easily say margin top 20 pixels, I refresh, and there is the spacing between those two, there is also spacing between the bottom and the border, because remember we gave a padding to it, and now sometimes when you are setting an image, it will repeat itself, for example if I put this to 900 pixels and refresh, do you see how it's repeating itself? You can actually, there is a setting called background repeat. You can set it to no repeat. And then when you are having a big or a smaller background, you can make it fit. So it won't repeat. And you can also set it to background, background position. If it's offset, you can set it to center vertically and horizontally. So two values go there center center what you could also do is uh, when styling the background is set the background size to either to contain but i prefer to use cover because then it will cover the whole space and now it's you can see it's quite ugly but i change it back to 300 pixels so these are some basic stylings you can use whenever you're working with background images now let's create an unordered list here because we'll be having a look at how to style unordered or ordered lists and our unordered lists. I fill it up with some list elements. There we go, it's filled up. If I refresh, you can see them right there. And again, I put it outside of the container. I want to put inside the container. Just like that. You can see there are some stylings applied to it. And for some reason, it's being pushed to the middle. That's probably the text align center. So we'll grab the UL element and say text align left, text align left to solve that. We we'll push them to the left side. That's great. And then we'll grab the list elements. And inside the list elements, you have properties called list style. And the list style, you can, there are some basic settings here. For example, disk. If I refresh, well, it didn't change circle, for example. Refresh, you can see how the little dots here, here change. Or what else do we have? Decimal. Then you can actually make an unordered list, an ordered list. You can... I set it back to circle real quick. You can also set list style position, which can be either inside, which will make it not overflow. So it put it inside the padding, it didn't go into the padding, or outside, which will let it flow into the padding, so it won't take it into consideration. Let's put inside right now. And you can also set something called style, this style image. You can do the same URL, and this will look well, not so good. But I copy the URL over here, what we've set in a background image. If I refresh, there are those images always 
appearing right there because now these little circles as for the list stylers get replaced by the big big images you could also search for a green tick like this hmm which one copy image address and come here to the url url and inside it paste it in oh it's even bigger it's even worse ah. but if you read right there and you can make those dots your own those list style elements so now let's go over some button stylings i create two buttons one of them is going to be a simple button called attribute just like this and we are going to jump back to our css and select the button first of all let me refresh you can see how those two buttons are next to each other that's because they are inline elements but if i say display block instead of the basic inline that they have and then refresh then they will get under each other let's set the margin 10 pixel from the top and the bottom and i'd also like to center them so auto from these sides i'd like a different width and height values for them so width and height you can set whatever you'd like there we go and i'd like to set a background color for our buttons so all buttons let's say this cutted blue will do i refresh there you can see each of them is cutted blue i'd like to remove the border because by default they have a border so i say border none but if i want to round them and this is separate from the border i do want a border radius of five pixels for example and the more pixels you do actually let's change this from the developer tools so i select the button and the more pixels you give to it you can set it here for example 10 pixels we round it even more or 50 pixels i believe there's a threshold i simply put one pixel you can see how to change two pixels three pixel you can play around with it and then after all it gets set but i'll leave the developer tools now and refresh five border radius will do it it will make those edges more smooth and the color will be white i'd like to have them a white color just like that what's important here is in css you have certain attributes for certain elements for example if i say button then column and then you can come here and search for disabled this will apply styling whenever the button is disabled and remember one of them is disabled and what i want to change here is the background color to be actually gray so if i refresh now you can see how there's a distinction between the disabled and the active one because this one is active and this one is simply disabled and you can keep on styling if something is disabled for example i want a different width to it like 30 pixels fresh you can see but as long after i set the disabled to force not necessarily force if i refresh oh i cannot set it to force then i just remove the whole value there we go but i'll give back the disabled you don't even need to set the true value for this you just say disabled and i'll also remove the width so we just played around with it i show you that you can actually style these and there is one that you are going to use very very often is you say come the column and then hover so these are some events in the web browser whenever you hover over it i want to change the background color of it to red for example let's try this out i hover over now it's red great it even affects the disabled one and you can also set or if we don't want to to affect the disabled one button disabled hover then background color let let it stay but i also like to show you that there is a property called transform and if you say transform you can rotate the element you can scale the element and this is what we are going to use 
this is in person so 1.05 will increase its size by 500 you can see the size increases there is something called transitions transitions are similar to animations except that they can only be added on certain css attributes and on certain events so for example you come transition then what attribute do you want to apply the transition to i want to apply it to the transform attribute so whenever the transform attribute changes this time it changes to scale 1.05 then you give it what type of animation do you want there is ease ease in ease in out and ease out they are all a little bit different yet still a little bit the same so i go with easy it doesn't really matter most of the time then i say how long should the transition be i say 0 0.4 seconds and if i refresh you can see there is a little bit of animation it jumps back if i don't keep hovering over it for 0 0.4 seconds but there is a little bit of animation that you can already give despite that this is not the real type of animation because we won't be going over those so i want to have a look at a few more of these there's not just hover and disabled after the column but for example in input elements there is there is the focus attribute so let's create some input elements right here we'll create two of them i'll remove these one of them is going to be of type text the other is going to be of type number if i refresh you can see those two are inline elements so they are next to each other let me style those input elements with some basic stylings that we've gone over so far so i'd like a margin of 10 pixels on the top and the bottom and auto on the sides so it will push them to the middle i'd like their display to be blocked just like the button so that they are under each other there we go i'd like to round them also by let's say six pixels so they have better edges and i'd like to set the border color to be transparent by default so you won't see the border but there is something called input column focus and the focus event we have get fire whenever you click into it like this so i want to change the border color to red whenever they focus into the input element and if i refresh and focus into it well it didn't quite work ah there you go so i gave it a new border a red dashed three pixel border and if you focus into it you can see it appearing right there I believe that's uh, some sort of default styling that it has whenever you focus over it. So you can see this is the basic styling that HTML gives it by default. But yeah, you can go and dig into those later. Let's create a div and give it the class relative. And inside this div, we are going to create another div. And this one's class is going to be pose item. And now I start off with styling the pose item because this time we'll be talking about positioning. So when you come to positioning, you look at the value. There is absolute, fixed, relative, static, and sticky that I'd like to go over. Static is the default. All of these elements are statically positioned. So they are inside the DOM flow at each other it's just the normal things there is the relative the relative means you can position it relatively to its current position but to see it we actually have to give it some styling so width of 50 pixels height of 50 pixels so it's a rectangle background color let's give it this green color and if I refresh, you can see there is our basic pose item. And with the top value, I can set offset it from the top by 30 pixels. And for example, with the left by 30 pixels as well. If I refresh, you can see 
if you give positive values on the top, it will get pushed it to the downward. And if you give positive values on the left, it will get pushed to the right. But if I give negative values, it will get pushed in the opposite di direction. There you go. And this is really simple. This is what relative does. So I'll actually style the relative div as well. The reason we put the relative outside is because actually let's not give it the position yet. I just want to give it a width of 90% just like the other divs we have. A height of 300 pixels. And let's give it a 5 pixel black solid border. And the margin auto to push it to the inside. If I refresh, there you can see it. But this time, I'd like to get the position of the pose item to be absolute. So what absolute position is going to do, you see it disappeared. Where did it go? It takes it out of the dome flow. And you can position it accordingly to the whole body or the next relative element. Because the relative elements get, get counted as parents to the absolute elements. So if I say 30 pixels and refresh it will push it inside by 30 pixels but i can also say 300 pixels and it will push it even down so it's basically out of the flow it's the body is the next parent that it has and it's according to that the left top corner is the zero zero position so it get it gets positioned according to that but if i set the relative position to the relative class then you can see now it gets positioned relatively to the top left corner of the relative div so if i see 30 pixels there we can see 30 pixels from the top and the left side there is actually another one we can look at which is called fixed so fixed if i refresh it will just get fixed on the page so it's always there it's offset by 30 pixels from the left and the top as I, as I scroll it's always there and the other one is sticky which is if I refresh it's basically oh we cannot test it yet that's because I need a bigger height for this one to be able to scroll let's say 3000 the sticky is a combination of absolute and fixed or relative and fixed because if I come you can see how before this, if I scroll, nothing happens. But if I start coming down, the little rectangle gets sticky, gets stuck to the top of our browser. And you can position this as well. So these are the basic positionings that I wanted to go over. We do have a separate video in it. That's why I just rushed through it. I want this to be absolute. And I put it back like this. And to wrap this up, and not run out of time too much i'd like to talk about media queries so media queries are tools that help you make your site responsive and the, and the way they do it is you come here say media like this then parentheses and inside the parentheses you say max width thousand pixels so below a thousand pixels you could also say min width so there is min and max width that i usually use so below or sorry above a thousand pixels something will change let's go with max width and what's important when you use these is that if you are using max width you have to put them in a descending order and when you're using min width you have to put them in an ascending order because i'd like to have three of these and one is going to be at 800 pixels and one is going to be at 600 pixels okay this might seem a bit overwhelming but what this essentially says is that inside this you can choose an element for example i'll choose the divs and the background color of the div will change to let's say this cartos the background color of this div will also change below 800 pixels to a purple one for background color purple and uh, again i select the div background color will change to crimson you can see it's all it's doing 
is that there is a rule set below a certain pixels an element that you select you can select multiple elements in here so i could also say age one and then you apply a css attribute below those pixels how we are going to test it is by first of all refreshing pressing f12 coming here to the device view i actually zoom out a little bit this is the large laptop view but if i start scaling it down up there you can see the pixels once it hits thousand pixels and we go below that the background color changes then once it hits 800 pixels the background color changes then once it hits 600 pixels the background color again changes and this is quite simple you can set different values for different sizes so for example if you want to make different stylings for an iphone you can do that or if you want different sizings for the templates that's given in the developer tools you can also do that this is what media queries are for. So with that, we've pretty much gone over all the fundamentals of CSS. If, if something isn't clear, this was a crash course, so I had to do it in a little less time. If something isn't clear, then comment down below. I'm happy to help. We'll solve everything together and we'll make sense of everything, that, any questions that you have. So if you found value in this video and would like to see more, Please consider giving us a like, maybe even subscribe. But other than that, I hope to see you in the next one.